Well, let's get to it tonight. We want to talk about astounding power prayer um, and, and, and listening to God in this. So four things tonight I want to bring up. Number one, the excitement of listening to God in prayer. Number two, God's voice. Number three, how to listen. Number four, uh, the voice of God as the grid. Um, here's the grid of how do you really discern whether it's um, God's voice. Uh, or, or We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let me begin with this, the excitement of just simply listening to God. I mean, I don't know about you, but um, when, you know, you, you can't be saved without the fact that God is you know, spoken to you and, and summoned you, and the Spirit of God brought conviction. There's communication that brings you to your knees, that leads you to believe. Um, let me tell you this clearly also. When you come to the Word of God, it is alive. The very Scripture is alive and has God's presence um, pouring out. So every single time you open the Scriptures, it doesn't make any difference where, it's, it's alive. It's, you know, Hebrews 4, it's alive, it's living, it's power, there's power in it. And uh, so that's, that, you got to realize there's a direct um, engagement uh, with the very presence and power of God speaking through the written words of God. Now that's important for us to understand as we're looking at this. I want you to know um, that one of my favorite psalms has been um, um, Psalm 37. Psalm 37 deals with this. Psalm 34, one of the great, great ones that I love, um, is, um, is, is, well, I sought the Lord and He answered me. I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So I, um, I, I, want you to, I want you to know that all through the Psalms you're going to see this. You're going to see this in the New Testament. Uh, you're going to see this engagement again and again and again. Well, God speaks to Moses. God speaks to Samuel. God speaks to David. God speaks to, you know, Deborah. I mean, you're going to have this all the way through, all the way to the New. So let's, let's begin with saying the excitement of listening to God. Uh, it is the norm that God speaks. It is the norm that God is, um, is speaking. And and the big issue is whether we're listening or, or, or you know whether we're listening or not, and we can dull down and dumb down our listening abilities through um, grieving the spirit of God, through quenching the spirit of God, um, being lackadaisical and just completely ignoring. I mean, you know, uh, we got to realize that um, our relationship with God is to be a relationship where we're believing Him, we're in obedience to God, we're growing in, in that relationship. And the presence, the living presence of God um, in us, all over us, uh, inseparable, nothing separating us, that's just what we are as believers. And the norm is, is that the living Savior dwelling in you, the Spirit of God le you know, living in you, He's to teach you, guide you, speak to you. Guide, you know, we're going we're to look at some direct things and look at Scripture where the Spirit of God is quoted by believers as the Spirit of God leads them. And one of those uh, is specifically in the context of prayer. So let me tell you this, the excitement of listening to God is very clear. You're going to find all the way through the Psalms that that's exactly what was happening, where the writer is calling out to God and God is answering. You're going to see that uh, again and again and again. God answered. God answered. Now, God answers directly and He speaks. God answers by, um, He speaks by the actual answer in prayer itself, we're going to see that tonight also. So, hope you're hope you're excited about prayer, and more than ever in our lives, um, you know, a great relationship with God will turn into a great uh, bearing of fruit. I mean, you'll become powerful in your walk, powerful in your prayer, powerful in your soul winning abilities, and and you're going to become stronger and more confident and experienced. And, you know, on the one hand, darkness and all that's going on around us is going to outrage you. You're going to stand up against it. You're not going to back down from anything. That's what God does as he builds the believer to become powerful. That's why we're called not to, not to let fear take over. And fear takes over where we have lack of obedience and lack of knowledge of the word and lack of experience. But listen, if you believe God, you step out in obedience and you keep obeying and you keep obeying and you keep walking, well, your relationship experientially gets clearer and uh, more consistent and God's presence is, con you know, his felt presence in your life is consistent. And, and rightly so. Uh, God is dwelling in you and God is with you. 
and Christ is there. And so in that interaction of worship, you're going to feel the joy of the Lord. God's inhabiting the praises of his people in the context of prayer, the spirit of prayer and supplication guiding you. So the truth is, in prayer, God, we should be experiencing God all over the place. That's how it should be in our churches if we are actually uh, praying in power, in the Spirit of the Lord, in His presence. Now, I go to Acts chapter 13 because you have leaders there that are praying, they're worshiping, they're, they're fasting, actually, also. And if you look at Acts 13, 2, as they worshiped the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now stop for a moment and mark down there if you want to, Acts chapter 8, because something very similar occurs there where you have Philip who's already out. He's an obedient believer. He's a strong believer. He's stepping out and he, he just gets stronger. And listen, when you get stronger, you're quicker. I mean, it, you just get literally on fire um, in your walk with God, and that's a great thing. Now, with him, he quotes in that chapter 8, the Holy Spirit said, go over there and stand next to that chariot. So in the context of soul winning, the context of uh, being guided and led by the Spirit of the Lord, he's able to quote exactly what the Spirit of God said. Now, Acts 13, 2 does the same thing. As they worshiped the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. This is God speaking. To say the Holy Spirit said is to say God said. The Lord spoke. The Lord said so. So in your life, in my life as a believer, uh, one of the relationship issues, I mean, not issues, but joys and privileges, is that God does speak to you. And I'm going to tell you again, in that developing relationship, the Word of God, be studying it, reading it, and because we're going to go over some of the ways in which God is speaking to you. Sometimes, just clearly, God speaks to you, the Spirit of God speaks to you, and you're able to quote exactly what the Holy Spirit said. In the context of prayer, that's powerful. It really is. Because as you're um, going to the Lord in His presence, and like I said, the great there's no greater place, no greater presence, that is, God is there. No greater power, the Spirit of God, God Almighty, is there to answer and to, from the throne of God, issue out. Um, and um, nothing's impossible for those that believe. This is where God unleashes things. And we have promises to bring before and quote before God, which is a good thing. The, the privilege, of course, is astounding. And, and the preparation for any day is, is, is astounding also. But um, when it comes to this time of you know spending some time with God in prayer, listen, I don't even care if you, you, know, you, only, like, you only have 15 minutes before you have to go into work or school. You're in your truck. You're in your car. Take 15 minutes. Work up to a half hour. Work up to 45 minutes. Listen, get your time in. You're going to realize, you're going to really realize what you've missed for so long. You're going to begin to realize the immediacy of the presence of God, the immediacy of uh, the place you're at when you're just simply stopping to worship, to pray, to talk, to listen, to interact. Have your Bible with you. Have it open if you want to. And uh, be reading it, reading it out loud. Read, taking, I encourage you today. I, I've read Psalm 146 a number of times today. I'd love to memorize the whole chapter, and I'm going to read it again today, uh, later on. And, and just uh, the in, incredible what God speaks to us and shows us. And, you know, you read, as you're reading, you can be talking to the Lord, how good you are, God, and praise you for this, Father, and thank you for that. And, well, John's Gospel, chapter 10, we have, uh, again, the clarity where Jesus speaking, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me. Now, this is big. Uh, when we see that the sheep, the, 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 those who are his, those that are, and we, we want to say this way, saved, you're born of the Spirit of God, you're in relationship with God. There's a difference. You can believe that God is out there, but do you know him yet? You can believe that there's got to be something out there that made everything. Well, that's a good thing. That's a reality. That's an, that's an acknowledgement that even creation acknowledges and pours forth the speech that God is real, that God is present, that, that an omniscient, omnipresent, um, omnipotent God, creator, 
Well, that creator, you read John's Gospel, chapter 1, that creator became human flesh. He came here, literally God Almighty in human flesh. John's Gospel, chapter 1, take a read of it. And when you do, um, you, you're going to see this picture of the, the we call the incarnation, God Almighty in human flesh. Take a look at him. If you want to see what God is like, how Jesus, you know, God speaks, how he acts, what he's come to do, um, my goodness, uh, the excitement of knowing him, the excitement of um, being directed, the excitement of just the felt presence of God. Nothing like in all the world. Listen, you're, you're listening right now to an ex-druggie, an ex-drinker, you know, um, and all that kind of stuff, an ex-practitioner of New Age and all kinds of other stuff in Buddhism, all these things that I was into until the living Christ came into my life and the Spirit of God came into my life and darkness rolled away and sin was cleansed and, and the Spirit of God came in and a new nature is given. John's Gospel, chapter 10. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. He's talking to the, the Pharisees. He's talking to the religious hypocrites of the day. These are people that wanted to claim God, wear the religious garb, um, very hypocritical in what they were and what they spoke and what they did, uh, very clothesline religious Pharisees. You know, Pharisee, you know, we call them Pharisees and so forth. But they didn't believe. They didn't believe the Old Testament. They didn't believe what Moses said. They didn't believe anything leading up. They didn't believe John the Baptist. All of what God was doing, God was speaking through Moses, Old Testament. God was speaking through John the Baptist and preparing the way. God was speaking through the Word of God. And here's what he says to the religious hypocrites. I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness to me, but you do not believe. Because you are not my sheep. As I said to you, now he's talking to the religious hypocrites. You can have people in churches, you can have people in robes, you can have people in, you know, that look, uh, they're wearing what would be considered religious garb. And it really doesn't mean a thing at all because it doesn't have anything to do with knowing God or a relationship with God. It really does not. Uh, when when we talk about this, we, we see how Jesus engages. If you want to see how he engages religious hypocrisy, if anybody's against religious hypocrisy, dead religion, fake religion, that's Jesus. Look at Matthew 23 and take a read of that someday. Look how he engaged fake, you know, pharisaical religion that, number one, the people that are living out that fake religion don't know God, and they can't help anybody. They only put burdens on people. That's what all the cults do. Now, verse 27, Jesus says, my sheep, referring to real believers in him, real believers in God, real believers that will have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. They shall never perish, nor shall anyone snatch them from my hand. Now, this is a big picture about the voice of God um, and Him speaking. We know His voice. Uh, that's clear when we look at the New Testament and look at the book of Acts. That's clear of believers all around me. And that's clear in my life. Uh, there's an excitement. Uh, and that, listen, there's a lot of things. I went through my entire prayer journal thing, all the things we're praying about, all the ministry that we're in, praying about this radio broadcast, praying about tonight, praying about you. And um, the excitement of listening to God in the context of that. That God speaks, that God's going to say something. So let me say in the very beginning, point number one is the expectation that God is going to speak based on all of Scripture, that God is a speaking God, a communicating God, a revealing God, a God that many times He's speaking and speaking and speaking, and we're not, you know, we're not the ones listening. Uh, there's an issue of listening uh, when it comes to this. And then responding to. There are those that might be listening to this broadcast for some years yet. You don't even know God. And um, yet you listen because you know I love you. And you know I pray for you. But you got to get saved. you got to have the living God come inside of you. you got to have Christ come inside of you. God is speaking to you to repent of sin, to turn to Jesus, to believe on him. That's part of the gospel, that you are to respond. If you sit and do nothing, nothing's going to occur. As a matter of fact, um, your ears may grow duller, your conscience may grow harder, your heart may grow harder if you're not going to listen to his voice today. 
It's important that you do. You're talking about God calling you, summoning you to salvation. If you're already a believer in Christ, listen, the excitement is God's going to be speaking all over the place. James chapter 1, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Now, we're going to come to God in faith. God's not going to answer the doubter. Uh, God's very clear. I mean, that's very clear. If you're living in doubt, yes, no, yes, no, yes, God, no, God, yes, no. You know, it's like opening a window, closing a window, opening a window, closing a window. Um, Just open the window. That means believe God, believe the word, stand on it, believe, yes. Um, And that's when God can begin to unleash wisdom. He's generous with that. Not finding fault. God wants to speak into you and wants to guide you and wants to give you the wisdom. God will speak to you to lead you. God will speak to you to confirm things. God will speak to you to answer questions. I sought the Lord and He answered me. Psalm 34. You're going to find that all the way through the Psalms. So the excitement about listening. The Savior that we have is a living Savior. The Savior we have is alive every day in you, with you, all around you, the Spirit of God. And well, obviously he speaks. So if you read Acts chapter 8 or you read Acts chapter 13, you're going to read how the Spirit of God said, and they were able to quote. Now that's one of the identifying marks of being hearing from God. Now, point number two, let's talk about the different voices. There's God's voice, of course. And I'm going to say this after, you know, four decades of knowing God, walking with God, God's voice is very distinct. I know his voice very well. I know his presence very well. Uh, Engaging deliverance and demons, I know their voice, their stuff. I know that side of the stuff. You become experienced. So the more you walk with God, the more you know his presence, the more you believe his word, the more you experience it all, all of it, what he says. Well, the voice of God is very clear. Um, So number one, God's voice. Uh, God is speaking to the world, uh, to the lost world. He's speaking, come home, repent. He's summoning. Uh, Paul says this in the, in, the, in the book of Acts, that God summons all people everywhere to repent. Um, every one of us out there witnessing and sharing Jesus, you can be confident that as you go to take the living gospel, where the very power of God, inseparable from his presence, by the way, his power is inseparable Uh, from his presence. So when we bring the gospel and bring the message and talk about Jesus and share Jesus uh, explosively, I mean, with love and and the power of God, and I mean, that's what witnessing is all about. There's a supernatural from God that's beyond anything else. I don't care what the devil offers, uh, that when you unleash that gospel, I'm not ashamed of that gospel. It's the power of God into salvation for everyone that believes. Uh, And that's what God will summon people to, to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus as Savior and Lord and God, all of who He is. Now, God is speaking through the gospel. God is speaking through the word. God is speaking through His servants all all over the planet. God will speak to you, to others. Now, learning His voice for you is the big issue we're talking about right now. I just want you to know, expect God to speak to you. Expect God to lead you. Expect God to confirm Expect God to answer you. There's God's voice. Now, I'm going to talk about the grid of God's voice. How do you know the difference? In just a moment, but there's your voice. There's my conscience. Um, there, you know, like today, I, 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 I had to ask myself whether I was going to stop and pick up a hamburger on the way home, which I didn't want to do because I don't want to, I'm trying to eliminate all these junky foods and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, we have some stuff good here and I'm got my workout in after 20 days, I got my workout in down at the YMCA today and uh, real, real commitment to training in the next 30 days, uh, just to have a body that God can use. <laughs> that's, that's an important thing for me. And I think God's been speaking to me about it, too, by the way. Um, but listen, when it comes to your voice, I mean, I, I'm sitting in the car, you know, I'm thinking, do I you know, want to go through Burger King? And no, I, I'm, I, you know, you talk to yourself. Don't, you know, that's, that's the truth. Um, and you make decisions. So there's just you and your conscience. Uh, that's part of you. That's, not, that's, that's where God's speaking, though. Romans 8, his spirit The Holy Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. There's a speaking, a communicating, 
a convincing the idea of the his spirit bears witness an umpire uh, the you know it's, it's almost like uh, the the confirmation uh, the Spirit of God witnesses to your human spirit that you're a child of God if you're born of the Spirit. Now listen again, religion won't save you, and if you don't have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you, you're not, you're not His yet. Romans chapter 8, study that. Especially if you've got a background in Christianity, and, 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 and religion seems a mystery. Religion seems like God's way up in the sky somewhere. No, He wants to come down. That's why Jesus came to that cross. And you might feel religious sentiment of seeing a crucifix or seeing a cross and, and, and certain music or whatever, but do you know God? And you don't until He dwells in you, as that's what the work of salvation is. The living God coming in when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior by faith alone. And then He lives in you. Now, then, he, you know, and, and if that's occurred, I mean, you, you've listened to God. He's, he's called you. He's called you to call on Him. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10 tells us. And when you do that, God is faithful. He comes in to save you. Now, you have your voice, and I know my own voice. Then there's the voice of others. Then there's others that want to give you advice, want to tell you things. You even sit down sometimes and think about what your mom said, your dad said, your husband said, your wife said, somebody else said, that kind of thing. Sometimes we need to talk to other individuals. And we got to discern even there whether it's them and their opinion. If they're a believer, a brother and sister in Christ, is God speaking through them? Is God using a charismatic gifting of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom? Whatever vehicle, if God is speaking through by the Holy Spirit and another, another believer to you, you're going to feel the same thing, his voice. Whether Here's what I've learned. Whether direct, the Spirit of God just speaks to me, or the Spirit of God speaks to me through somebody else, or through some charismatic gifting like word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of prophecy, and God speaks, well, the voice, the presence, it's, his voice is the same. Now, there is the issue that, of Satan and demons and deception when people think that, well, I don't know if that's God's voice or Satan's voice. Well, the truth is Satan never leads you to do what God wants. Satan never uh, leads you to love Jesus, follow him. Satan doesn't want you to get in the word of God. I mean, God wants to speak to you and confirm his word in the scripture. Uh, God wants to speak to you concerning him and making Christ known and, and growing in Christ. And yet the dark side comes with counterfeit and deception. The dark side would come in voices that lead to a fake Christ, a de-deified Christ, um, and, and false prophecies and false things. And, and, and that's what I think Deuteronomy 13, if you get time to study that tonight. When someone comes in and does a sign or wonder and leads you away from the Word of God, that's not from God. That's not from God. Let me give you point three tonight concerning the grid. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this around, but vo point number three tonight. How do you know? I mean, this is what's important because is it God's voice, my voice? Is somebody else just talking to me, you know, some other person or whatever else? Um, or demonic? And obviously you want to be able to recognize, discern demonic stuff and get rid of it and re reject it immediately. The enemy sends arrows, Roman or Hebrew, or, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, in the context of the armor of God. The evil one sends arrows involuntary, that is, you didn't volunteer for it, but, but the enemy sends communication through pushing either a feeling or a thought on you, and that's going to run contrary to the Word of God, contrary to the mission of God, contrary to the character of Christ. And you and I need to reject that immediately, rebuke that immediately, and again, establish ourselves uh, in the Word of God. And when you're establishing yourself in the Word of God, you're going to be establishing yourself uh, in the presence and power of the Spirit of God. In Ephesians chapter 5, we are commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God. In Colossians chapter 3, we are called upon to let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. The two should go hand in hand. Being filled with the Spirit of the Lord, filled with the Word of God, is a person that's going to be able to hear and uh, distinguish and be able to quote what, what, what the Spirit of God is saying to you, what God is saying to you. But here's part of the grid when it comes down to the voice of God. You know, if you're, you're seeking the Lord about something personally, in ministry, whatever it may be, 
No, there's three things that never happens. He never speaks against his word. Two, he never speaks against the mission of, that he has in reaching the world for Christ. And three, he never speaks against the person or character of Christ. So please understand very clearly when it comes down to the voice of God in your life, when God is speaking to you, when somebody comes and says, God told me uh, that I don't need to read my Bible for the rest of my life. That's a lie. God told me that Jesus isn't the only way to salvation. That's a lie. That's not the word of God. That's not it at all. That's, not, that's against the character of Christ and what he did. Um, God doesn't want me to witness to anybody. That's, that's a lie. That's contrary to the Word of God. So anything that would come to you through another person, through a dark voice, a counterfeit voice, that would go against the Word of God, against the mission of Christ, or against the person and character of Christ, you can know immediately that is not of the Spirit of God. You're going to find out that in the Old Testament or the New, you're going to find out in the book of Acts that when the Holy Spirit says, as we read in Acts 8 or as we read in Acts 13, God never, I mean, God will speak in unison to the Word of God. As a matter of fact, many times the Holy Spirit will take a verse of Scripture. You know, you can read all the, any Scripture. It's all alive. It, God is speaking through all of it. But you know there's times when all of a sudden the Spirit of God takes a verse you haven't thought about for a long time or has one particular verse that He speaks to you with. It'd be just one verse. Now, I've had that happen. I could be out mowing the law, you know, I'm mowing the lawn, talking to the Lord, doing, you know, and just out there and engaging. God knows how to answer then. Listen, if you know how to talk to God while you're cutting the grass, you know, whether you're sitting in a chair somewhere, whether you're walking down the street, or whether you're driving to work, if you can begin to speak to God, you know what? God knows how to speak right back to you. And sometimes God is speaking to you when you're not even, maybe even willing. Like, Adam, 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 where are you? you know, God came looking, you know, engaging Adam. Where are you? If we sometimes stop and realize that we need to listen, we need to expect that God is speaking to us, we need to expect there's times that God really wants to drive some scripture into us that we need. Sometimes I've sat there just in prayer time to say, Lord, is there any scripture? Is there anything you need to show me? Anything you need to give me? I told you yesterday in the broadcast for every single year, I look for, uh, I mean, I, I'm evaluating the year prior. I'm looking at the year coming up. I'm praying over everything that needs to be done. God doesn't change his word. He doesn't change his will. He doesn't change his mission. That's all the same. He didn't change the answer, uh, Christ, to the world. That doesn't change. But directions, application. Um, where to go next, what city to go to, what conference to go to, what person to speak to, what, who can I get to, and, and, and Lord, what do you need, what do I need? You know, sometimes God just wants to speak to you for fellowship. It doesn't have to be some massive leading that's going to alter your life. It, sometimes it's just you fellowshipping with God and God just loving you and giving you a word or bringing a scripture to your mind, the Spirit of God bringing a particular scripture uh, scripture and a particular truth to your mind, and all of a sudden you're filled with joy. All of a sudden you know the Holy Spirit has brought you a particular... You know, you know whose word that is? All scripture is the language of the Holy Spirit. Read the first couple chapters of Hebrews, you're going to see whether the writers say, and God has said, or, and the Holy Spirit said. There's times the Scripture writer, led by the Spirit of God, quoting the Old Testament, will say, he'll say, instead of saying God said, or the Scripture says, you know what he says? And the Holy Spirit said. Every single verse you quote, the Holy Spirit said. So if I quote a scripture to you, I could say the scripture says, or God says, or the Holy Spirit says. Any scripture I would speak, I can, I can preface it by that. The Holy Spirit says. Why? Because he's the one that guided in the inspiration, guided it all down, and uh, all the way to the process of what we have here in front of us today. Uh, this is a living word. This is his words. It's his book. There's one primary author behind the entire Scripture. Now, there's 40 different writers that God used, the Spirit of God used. They knew they were being guided by the Spirit of God. The writers even knew that. 
they're being led. And the result was the plenary, that is the full and complete inspiration of Scripture. And it involves um, the supranatural, that is for coming from God. Um, I, got, I got thousands of books all around me. There are books, and I've written books, that I feel that God gave me a message to give and, and put out there and you know, could have, a, have an impact. But that's not the Word of God. Hopefully books that we write and Christians write are packed with the Word of God, but, but you got to understand the Bible is the Bible. That's the great above everything. I don't care what else I read, what else I study, whatever theology I read, whatever book I read from somebody else, and I've got at least 30 books around me. I, whenever, whenever you look at my shelves or, or my desk, if I had them sitting there sideways, those are books that I got that I haven't read yet. And so there's books all around me sitting sideways, and books that I got for Christmas, books since that time, books in my Kindle. Uh, stuff that I feel I need to research. But sometimes just books that I read that inspire me. i got four or five books on revival in front of me. A couple, a couple of them are really old ones that I probably read 25 years ago. I believe God for revival and revival now. I'm, I'm praying that God strike. Don't we need this? Don't we need millions and millions and millions saved? Is it not true that God is not willing that anybody perish? Doesn't the Holy Spirit say that God is not willing? Well, that's that's the Holy Spirit says. Every scripture, the Holy Spirit says. And there's time when the Holy Spirit will take a scripture and just burn it right into your heart, burn it right into your conscience, bring it right to your mind. And it might be just out of fellowship. It might be just bringing you joy, bringing you comfort, bringing you um, uh, a sense of just relationship. I love you, God. I love you, Lord. Thank you. And there's other times that that scripture comes to bring a conviction, to tell you what not to do, to tell you what to do, to not go to the left or right. Uh, God wants to guard you. There's times we can go in prayer. And again, prayer doesn't mean just go pray, 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 ask, 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 and go, go away. Don't forget fellowship. You're in the greatest place, no greater place, no greater presence. Um, when we talk about God you know, speaking and the Word of God speaking and there is God before us, listen, 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 listen. Because God's going to be speaking all the time. And the great of this is God never speaks against His Word, never speaks against the mission of Jesus, never speaks against the character or person of Christ. On the opposite, when God speaks, when the Holy Spirit says, in unison with all the Word of God, in unison with the will of God, the mission of Christ, and the, and the person and character of Christ. It'll always be that way. And you'll find that to be consistently true through the book of Acts as we go through this also. So when we think in terms of um, God's voice, expectation, joyful, it's, it's, um, it involves the saving of lives. Think in terms of the voice of God in um, investigating satanic ritual abuse, underground pedophile rings, and everything else. Think in terms of um, Daniel chapter 2, when they had to get together and pray and pray and pray and pray, and you know what? God answered them. And, and in the prayer that is recorded by Daniel, he gives the answer that God gave. And then he spouts off in praise to the character of God, to the goodness of God, to the knowledge of God. It's an incredible, it's an incredible prayer there in, in Daniel's uh, book, chapter 2. So when you read chapter 1 and 2, you, you see the backdrop to all of that. And in our prayer time, we want God to answer. The ultimate issue is prayer is all about the answers. Magnificent answers, astounding answers, miraculous answers, involving the salvation of life, the healings, the deliverances, obviously, intervention. I just read two emails where, and, and I'm, I'm, there's a couple of individuals and a couple that I was able to uh, use my smartphone and, and, and record a text message back to them or a, you know, I, uh, in an email. And, and to let somebody know, you know, one person wrote me and I didn't know what to tell them about the area they live in, but I wanted to know that I prayed for them today. And another man writes about another girl and I, I don't know what to, you know, I'm too far away. And so I'm praying because I know that prayer can reach you in Texas and prayer can reach you in California and prayer can reach you. I got a girl that was wanting me to call out of Ireland and um, because of the flu this last weekend, I wasn't able to, but I plan on getting back to that individual to talk to them. But I, I want you to know that, that God is there to talk to you. Jesus is there to talk to you. And so you know, pour into the Word of God, walk in obedience to God, and the voice of the Lord will be very, very clear in your life. Now, I have mentioned the excitement of listening to God. He'll be all over the place in the context of a powerful prayer life. 
I have mentioned uh, God's voice, your voice, other people's voice, the lying voice of Satan. I've mentioned the grid. Um, God will speak in unison and confirmation of uh, his, his word, his will, his mission, and the person and character of Christ. Now, let's do this. How to listen. Let me give you here in about five minutes just simply how to listen. Uh, this is about six or seven things. Number one, expect God to speak. It's normal. I mean, just absolutely expect God to speak. It is just the norm, I, I, I believe, and I, I love going back to scriptures that I that I and I and I and I'm telling you about Psalm 34, uh, a very um, familiar you know psalm for me, a very powerful psalm. I sought the Lord and He answered me. Now I'm going to go to Psalm chapter five and read something. Listen to this. Here's the writer, the psalm writer, led by the Spirit of God. Now the Holy Spirit says it to us. The Spirit of God teaches us. Psalm chapter 5, quote, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Listen to the voice of my cry. My God and my king, my king and my God, for to you I will pray. Verse 3, listen. O Lord, in the morning you will hear my voice. In the morning I will direct my prayer to you. And I will watch expectantly. Now, when you take a look at that, and just take, take time to read and, and, and meditate even on Scripture, waiting expectantly involves God speaking back, God answering back. Now, the psalm writer, when he says, and God answered me, can refer to the God spoke to him. I mean, just literally spoke to him. Um, or that God actually answered the prayer right in front of his face. He answered um, by his power, and that's how God speaks. That's how God demonstrates. So sometimes you can say, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from my fears. He delivered you from demon spirit. He delivered some fear in your life. He, he touched you with his power. He healed you in an inner healing sense. Um, you know, God answered some other prayer that something occurred, and you rejoice. Man, I, I, I don't know where we've lost this. When's the last time in church you've heard testimonies to the clarity, the astounding um, power of God in answer to prayer, what God has done? Well, that's God's all over the place in the book of Acts. God's all over the believer in obedience, filled with the Spirit, in obedience to Jesus, boots on the ground. If you're growing... You're going to be growing not only in your relationship, not only in your love, but you're going to grow in your service. And there's an expectation to be God being at work. I mean, you can mark down Mark 16, 20. If you've read the book Expelling Darkness, you've heard me in there repeat again and again and again. And I even gave you places in the book. Write that verse down. Memorize that verse because when you begin to do like the early disciples did, you're going to experience what they did. And that verse tells us that the Lord worked with them. That means he's present. He's working in the context of evangelization. He's healing. He's delivering. He's doing signs and wonders at times. The Lord Jesus is with us. Say it. He is with you. He is with me. And the expectation. Uh, you, could, you could mark down again Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and just yield to it. But there should be, number one, an expectation. All of Scripture is speaking. God is speaking through all of it. There are times the Spirit of God will give you one verse or this verse or that verse, or He'll just speak to you direct, or He'll speak through you. Listen, I have heard God speak to me through other individuals, and I knew it more than they knew it. I knew that God was speaking through them to me more than they knew that it was God speaking through them. I mean, there, that just happens at times. There's times that I'll be at conferences or places and speaking, and, and someone will come and say, man, God just spoke to me through you know this or that that was said in the context of the message. So God's all over the place. He's speaking. Number uh, two, if you want, again, this is how to listen. Expect Him to speak. It's norm. Um, number two, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord at times. Wait for Him to speak to you. Uh, number three, in the middle of fired up prayer, God might just interrupt you and speak to you. If you feel him interrupting you, listen. Number four, 
As you're pouring out to God in prayer, let him pour back into you. Let him speak to you more than just a verse. There's times that God really wants to pour into you and speak into you and bring you and take you to an entire chapter somewhere and just pour it into you. Number five, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit's with you. The Holy Spirit's supposed to guide you and confirm inside you and lead you and direct you. So it should be an expectation, um, honoring the Spirit of God's presence in your life. Uh, number six, the Spirit of God gives you a verse. We've said this. Number seven, the Holy Spirit speaks through others. And that could be through charismatic giftings and so forth. So let me just encourage you tonight that um, in the midst of crises, Sometimes God is the one that led you to pray in the first place. God put it on your heart to pray. God put the burden on your heart. You're going to see answers all over. Well, in the context of praying, in the context of powerful answers all around you, God is speaking and God is um, confirming. God is building your faith. God is directing you and God is teaching you. And sometimes it's just God loving you and, and, uh, and, and fellowshipping with you. That's what it is. This is the God that loves you. This is the God that's with you. This is the God that saved you. Listen, this is the Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast. This is Russ Dizdare. Don't forget to look shattertheDarkness.net on the web. Right-hand side, there's uh, the free training courses. If you, if you haven't gotten them yet, get there already and start downloading. Remember us in prayer. Remember us in support. We'll see you. Good night.